there, this is Oscar Mikey, and welcome back to this Lock of the Irish Iron Man achievement run. The Day of Reckoning has arrived upon us, and we're just about to declare war on England. Before we do that, there's a few things we're going to have to complete, including increasing our military technology level to level 7, giving us that all-important military tech lead. Uh, in addition, we're going to have to start slowly building our army sets, but before I do that... I want to go ahead and boost my my uh, province's overall development. And the reason I'm doing that, it's pretty simple. There's no way in our current position with our current economy we're going to be able to take on England. We're going to be in for probably a long war if uh, my previous experience is anything to go by. And in order to win that war, we're going to need to plow all our excess monarch power into boosting our development. And I'm just going through every province and checking to see which provinces I can increase my development by the most, for the most benefit. Also important to point out that I have my loyalty with Merchants Guild above 60%, which is, of course allows me to you know, get a bit of a dispensation on boosting overall development levels. So I'm just doing that now. Don't want to... Uh, excise all my administrative monarch power. I'm not going to have enough left over to core the provinces I want to conquer from England. So that's about, I'll keep a reserve of about 400. Start to recruit uh, three chevauchés. Chevauchés being the cavalry choice, uh, the cavalry of uh, choice to, uh, you know, based on their high shot values. And I'm going to activate my fortifications, not forget about that, as well as activating my fleet and preventing it from mothball. So I went to the States Interaction, and for 40 Army Tradition, getting a General with 40 Army Tradition, I actually got a General of 2 Fire and 4 Shock, so that's pretty good. That's well, well above average. Additionally, my Faction Leader is 3 Shock. He would have done, but 4 Shock is uh, going to give us that all-important edge as we move forward. Alright, so my Army's almost... I say almost, we're actually going to have to go, so we're pushing ourselves way, way above our, land for, our total land force limits. And that requires us taking out a lot of loans, so um, if, you, if you're if you a bit of a fiscal conservative, well, look away, because this is, gonna, this is going to be quite shocking for you. So, luckily for us, England hasn't decided to build any fortifications in the north of their country. That means that we're going to be able to fight battles in the north and probably pursue them right to the south of England. All their fortifications are located in the southwest of England. Right now I'm just moving my fleet about, getting that all-important reconnaissance information. That's that 5,000 troops in Yorkshire, one infantry unit, four cavalry units. That's going to be my original target. My, And we're going to seek to eliminate that and then proceed on to destroy the main English army in the field. Alright, so I've recruited uh, additional infantry units. I'm keeping as few cavalry as I possibly can, bearing in mind how much they cost in terms of maintenance. Alright, declare war on the 1st of January. Always declare war at the start of a month, and we'll just plough straight into this, see how well we do. I've got a good plan uh, for... Uh, crushing the English army in the field, preventing them from drawing to, uh, withdrawing into the interior. So, over the top we go. Raise war taxes, and our first port of call is Yorkshire, where we're going to eliminate that first English army. So we declare war at the start of a month. That means that they, we catch them with slightly lower army maintenance. So, 4,000 cavalry, 1,000 infantry. See if we can eliminate this straight away. You see we have the all-important... Uh, Advantage in our military tactics level, and we have higher combat with, which we're going to need if we're going to have any chance of taking down the uh, the 29,000 troops that are beelining straight for Scotland here. So in order to prevent them from parking up in Lovian and sieging down that fortification, I'll move into Cumbria and prevent them from uh, proceeding any further. And in order to induce them into attacking into Cumbria, because it's marsh, yeah, no, wood, sorry, with a river crossing, I'm going to split my army into two parts. And once we occupy Cumbria, that usually precipitates them into launching an attack. Which means they're going to take a minus two modifier to an attacking force. No, a minus one, because they're general superior maneuver. 
And I forgot about my trade ships as usual. Well, that's not really that big a problem. Those trade ships weren't really helping us in, uh, in prosecuting this war. It will be a shame losing them later on, though that's going to cost us a lot of income. So, sure enough, they attack Compia, and I'm going to take out loans and recruit as many mercenaries as I can. Even though they only have a slight numerical superiority, and we should, in theory, win easily, right? Because of a superior military tech level, general, and the fact that we're fighting a defensive battle. I never take anything for granted. If we got shocking rules, we're going to need those additional uh, mercenary units, which we're going to use to reinforce. So, battle commences. L lose the first two rules. Lose the second shock roll. Uh, so, I win the third shock roll, I think that is. Okay, no, we're actually doing all right here. We're getting reasonably decent rolls here. Um, yeah, average there. Eight to five in the fire, and eight to two in the shock. So about average rolls, but our mercenaries reinforced and we're able to take our first major victory off the English. It will not be our last. We're going to have to defeat many, many armies. The English have incredible resilience in the fact that they're able to marshal up forces in the southwest of the country where I'm not able to pursue them. They have their powerful fleet. They have their con uh, European continental allies. And they just have an economy which is probably about six or seven times as powerful as our own. So I'm they're going to retreat to London because that's their capital with fortification. We're going to pursue them. Um, see here there's a 5,000 troop army in Oxfordshire. I don't know where that's going. I'm going to make a wee diversion here. Instead of going into Essex and London, I'm going to divert my forces to Oxfordshire and then into London. That will allow me to intercept that. Single cavalry unit, wipe it out. And still attack into London without losing any time. Uh, we will take a river crossing attacking into London, so... We are going to be able to attack before the end of this month. That means we're going to attack the English army when they're very low army morale. Don't think it's going to be enough to stack wipe them. See. No, they're going to retreat probably to Yorkshire, so I'm going to uh, make sure I pursue them. Yorkshire or Northumberland is probably going to be their retreat path. So we're going to pursue them, not let up the pressure. They'll probably get one month's worth of army morale recovery. They will indeed. Yeah, they're heading straight to Northumberland. Uh, we'll take a minus two modifier to an attacking force here. Based on marshes and river crossing. Yeah, I can tell you we're not going to be able to stack right from here. So we're going to have to keep the pressure up. Ensuring that they're not able to marshal up enough forces to pose a threat. If they get to the sort of 30,000 man doom stack. There's nothing we're going to be able to do to break up their army formations. So keeping up the pressure. See if we can stack wipe right them here. They're going to have one month's worth of army morale recovery. Then very, yeah, well, this should be it. Let's see here. Yeah, they don't even make it to the fourth shock phase. Okay, so that's 15,000 troops successfully dispatched. Um, which is good, but it's by no means over yet. Like I said, they're incredibly resilient. They're able to build huge armies in the southwest of England, and we're not able to break up those army formations. We've been successful in preventing them from retreating too far into the interior, but for now it's just a case of hunting down their reinforcing regiments, depleting their manpower, occupying as many provinces as we can. So our next target is this small army marshalling up in the north in Cumbria. Uh, small, it's 6,000 now, and it looks like they're going to have reinforcements from, from Ulster. For so 9,000 troops in total. English general is too far and too shot. Not too bad, but no match for our own general. So we'll not be able to stack wipe that army, but we'll see if we can hunt him down. Now I'm just focusing on occupying as many provinces as I can, to, uh, depriving them of provinces to recruit additional regiments, harming their economy and contributing greatly to their war exhaust. Now they have a 5,000 man army in Leinster. They've been able to launch an amphibious disembarkation. Um, so we're going to have to deal with that later on. 
uh, pursuing a very much sort of second Punic War style strategy, knowing that I can't really divert forces into Ireland yet to deal with that small army, and they can just keep building up additional troops in the south here, which is what they're doing. I'm just being as aggressive as I can, intercepting these small army stacks and always aiming for the stack right. That's why I opted for the Galloglass infantry type, because it has very high shock values, which means it battles it over quickly, almost inevitably end in the complete destruction of the enemy army. Which is good news for us. Yeah, things are going reasonably well. Bearing in mind, we need to conserve enough troops to siege down their fortifications. So I'll hire some additional mercenaries here. Because we are running quite low on our total army size. And I don't have good scouting information to see what they're doing in the south of England. But I can tell you they're almost inevitably building up uh, additional troop concentrations. So they already have about 8,000 troops Close to our occupying forces, I've left a single unit there sieging down that single fortification uh, to prevent them from occupying the reoccupying the provinces I previously occupied. Yep, they've got eight and a half thousand troops moving into Oxfordshire, so I'm going to attack that. I will take uh, a lot of no. Oh, Bad modifiers based in the woods in that province, but can't let that army run amok. Have to attack it before it's able to build itself up. Actually, quite lucky that 2000 army in the adjacent province decided not to reinforce. That would make that would have made defeating this army a heck of a struggle. But we appear to be getting decent rules here, yeah. Now they're reinforcing, but it's too late. We're able to eliminate that army. I don't think we're going to be able to pursue it. It's going to retreat into Kent, where the fortification in London obstructs us. So we're now entering sort of the... Okay, so 2,000 troops did attack Oxfordshire, after all, and that's going to be one stack raped army, 2,000 infantry defeated. So we're sort of heading into the more attritional phase of this strategy, just seeking to wear him down, preventing him from building up too many troops. Always relying on my uh, army maneuverability to do just that. Now that siege in Leinster's getting quite close to completion, and if they were to successfully occupy our capital, that would be a total disaster. There is still hope I am going to take. We do have high war exhaustion, but we don't have any revolt risk, so I'm going to take the army tradition just to get the nominal increase in overall army morale. In keeping with that theme of mid-maxing here. Yeah, so that we have to move straight away and hope to God that the English don't have the intelligence to... Oh no, it doesn't matter, of course, because... Uh, river crossings have changed, where if you have both of the province occupied, they're not able to stop you from travelling across. So we will be able to deal with these 5,000 troops in Leinster. And France is... Brought into abeyance the subsidies they were so generously giving us. So that's about four ducats per month. We're going to have less in total income. So we're going to have to end this war quickly. Or we're going to face the prospect of bankruptcy. We defeat that army. Prevent them from taking our capital. Which would have been disastrous. The downside to that is that's going to give them sufficient time. Yep. To build up another huge army. Which they have presently done. Uh, Sixteen and a half thousand troops. And they're... Heading again straight for Scotland. So I'm going to have to move into Cumbria and prevent them from occupying the war goal. Which I'm doing now. Okay, so they are going to get to Cumbria before us. So, well, let's counterman that order. Yeah, we'll arrive in the 27th. Which is a problem, but it's not disastrous. Anytime something like this happens, what they'll probably do is move into Cumbria and then park their army there. And we take control of the war goal. And if they do that, the danger is they'll then proceed on to Lothian and siege down that fortification, which would be bad. And given the fact that Lothian doesn't have good defensive terrain 
I'm not going to want to find a defensive battle here. So I just uh, I outflank their army. It's a really good tactic you should employ often anytime this happens. Outflank their army and seek to eliminate any reinforcing regiments. And here's the first one. Uh, three, five, that's five regiments in total, three infantry, two cavalry. And we'll move in, stack wipe that army, and that actually induces them into attacking into Lancashire, which is not great because they're not going to take any modifiers to attacking force. So, loans and mercenaries. <laughs> Theme of this strategy, loans and mercenaries, and we'll hire as many of them as we can. Now, they all don't have much of a numbers advantage, only 500 troops. They have a lot more cavalry, we have a better general, better military technology. Let's see these rolls. We seem to be doing okay, but it looks like I'm going to rely upon those mercenaries to boost my overall army morale. They're getting pretty good rolls, actually, as you can see. A brutal final 9-9 shock roll, yeah. They got very good rolls there, so... Thankfully, we took out those loans and had those mercenaries. If we didn't, we would have almost inevitably lost that battle. Even though we had the same numbers, higher, better general, better military tactics. That's the effect that a few good rules will make. So never become overconfident. Never be complacent. If you're going to take a critical battle like that, hire mercenaries. Even if you have to take out three or four loans to do it, just to ensure that you have a 100% chance of winning the battle, which we did. So, pursue them into London. They're actually retreating into Kent, so they're going to be able to marshal up. Um, sort of unmolested by our forces. So, we're going to probably have to fight another few major battles like that in order to win. So, I'll just spread my troops out and focus on occupying as many provinces as we can, considering the fact that I can't really fight them at this stage. Need to end this war quick. We're not in it for the long haul. We can't fight a long, drawn-out, attritional struggle. Just to clarify that, the reason why we can't do that is because we're going to have to... Well, first off, our colonies going down the toilet, basically. They're kind of throwing the kitchen sink at us, I can tell. They're hiring a lot of mercenaries. We need to totally destroy the English army in the field so that we can then proceed in sieging down their free fortifications. So we're, we're t time is running out for us. We got to... Uh, and you can see in France, the whole point of calling in France is they're keeping England's continental allies busy there. Even though they seem to be struggling a little bit. Um, we're... Still responsible for defeating the mainstay of the English army. And we're just waiting sort of the next English doom stack to come out of the shadows. Here it comes. They've created another army of 25,000 troops. Which is more troops than the total army size I'm currently fielding. So I'm going to have to retreat, reposition my forces and hire some additional mercenaries. We're going to get to Lincolnshire before the English army. I believe we are. Yep. Yeah. So we'll take a straight up pitch battle and hope to God we get some good rolls. We are here. We're getting some very good rolls. Alright, so... That was probably the most important battle of this entire war. And we kind of locked out a little bit there. We, I mean, we should have won. We had... You know, the better general, the better technology, but we could have easily lost if we had got bad rolls. So we'll pursue that army to London. Don't think we'll be able to get the stack wipe. Nope. So that means we're going to have to fight yet another of these major titanic clashes in order to crush that English army in the field. I'm not even attempting to siege down any of the fortifications until we've totally destroyed the English army in the field. Alright, we'll pursue this lone cavalry regiment. I don't know... No, I do know where it's going. It's heading straight for the war goal. See if it can sneak retaking Cumbria. Yeah, it stops in Cumbria. So that's one dead cavalry unit. Splitting up my forces and focusing once more on... Sieging down these fortifications. Leaving some troops... 
to ensure that they can't be reoccupied. I'm going to head straight down south again because they've got 16,700 troops once more. And that's again about the same, just slightly under our total army size. So we're going to have to fight yet another major pitch battle. Set piece engagement. Usually try, try to avoid these types of battles, but... There's no way around it. They have the sense to concentrate their troops. And we're just going to have to focus on breaking them up. Yeah, France seems to be struggling a little bit in their war on the continent. I haven't been paying much attention to them because the real decisive battles are taking place in England. And as you can see, England's not going to surrender until we have at least one fortification down. And to have any hope of sieging down fortifications, we're going to have to break up their... Army size, which is ballooned to 22,300 troops in Wessex, now in Oxfordshire. Another army that's going to have to be crushed. And in order to have any chance, we're going to have to hire many, many more mercenaries with many more loans. And we're losing 11.1 .1 ducats per month, which is more than our total income per month. So we're losing... In expenses more than our total nationwide income <laughs> so that's how that's the that's how much I'm really stretching my economy here in order to be so what am I doing now I'm detaching my main army into Der uh, Derbyshire in the hope of inducing the English army into attacking uh, yeah they do so they don't even wait to they take the bait we're gonna be able to reinforce we get a breach in the fortification and we're going to take out more loans, <laughs> many more loans, and we're going to hire more mercenaries. This time I'm going for a cavalry unit, because this is probably going to be the last battle, given the fact that we're about to come... Yeah, so battle is joined. Get a good shock roll, a good fire roll, even shock. And lose slightly the fire. So some more good rolls, we're able to... Defeat that army rather easily, actually. So the reason why that's probably going to be the decisive battle is we're about to complete complete the siege of that fortification. So I'm going to detach a single regiment, ensure that we maintain the breach and fortifications in that province. So I'm going to take the remainder of my army and pursue the English. Hopefully they'll regroup in London. Um, I'm not exactly sure, though. If they regroup in London, they're finished. They do. So we'll move in, and that's 13,000 English troops crushed. So, after many, many, after about three or four uh, 40,000 man battles, we have prevailed. That is going to be it. The only question now is we can close out this war before we face the prospect of bankruptcy. So I'm going to detach all my armies and focusing now on sieging down all the fortifications. Focus on sieging down London and um, marches. And if we can do that, then we'll probably, we might, no, we'll probably leave me. I'm not sure that we're, after this war, we're going to have to disband all, basically our entire army and low army maintenance and just demolish all our fortifications because... Uh, we are, we, bankruptcy is a real prospect here, and bankruptcy would not be good. So again, they're creating another little army in, um, uh, whatever the heck that province is. I can't actually remember. Oh, Lancashire. Alright, we defeat it. And now, now we... We only have minus 70% progress in the Siege of London, so that could potentially turn into a two or three year siege. We will be able to last that long, but it's going to be close. Um, we can start occupying all of England's provinces. That will help boost our overall income. Ah... Uh, Sending another army into Cumbria, so I'll go ahead and intercept that. What a... This has probably been my most ad hoc war I've ever fought. 
I mean, the only re the only reason I've been able to basically win this is through really atrocious uh, disregard for my economy and taking out. We're probably up to maybe twenty loans by now, but it has paid off for us. And you, you, after losing that army in London, they're just not able to. They're probably de totally depleted and. Uh, they probably have no manpower left. It's doubtful whether or not they have the economy to hire many more mercenaries. And they have reduced provinces from which they can do that. So I am going to just keep attacking these uh, small armies wherever they happen to be. And focusing on... I need 9,000 troops in London to complete that siege. And 6,000 in marches to complete that one. So that ties down most of my troops. The remainder is just... Uh, now, if they're able to occupy Ayrshire and move into Ulster, I'm not going to actually be able to follow them because... Oh, no, I will, because I could reoccupy Ayrshire. Never mind, but if they had occupied Lon uh, Ulster, which would have been very smart, with just a single unit, I wouldn't have been able to uh, retur uh, return my army to Ireland because they would blockade the passage from Ayrshire to Ulster, and that would allow them to occupy three of my provinces, which would be very bad. Luckily, the AI doesn't have the intelligence to pull off such a, min a move, but I'm just thinking about what they could have done in order to uh, sort of blunt the Leinsterian onslaught. And what an onslaught it was. We kept our cavalry numbers. You'll notice I kept very few cavalry. My max cavalry in any single battle was, I think, 6,000. And that's not because I'm unaware. There's the Siege of March is completed, so we're going to be able to occupy basically all of England now. Yeah, it, I am aware that cavalry is so effective in the early stages of the game, but it's also, they're still quite inefficient from a cost point of view. They're efficient from the point of view of keeping your army size below the land, total land force limits whilst keeping a heck of a punch. Uh, so I could have potentially recruited a lot more cavalry and that would have kept my land force limits slightly lower and therefore the penalty lower, but decided to go for the pure infantry approach knowing that I was going to take a heck of a lot of casualties. So we're able to occupy every province in England with the exception of Kent. Now that uh, siege in London has no um, it's it's gonna it's only at minus 56% now given the fact that we're not able to blockade it. And I'm actually starting to Defeat this army in Ayrshire, so I'm actually starting to disband mercenaries. In it, indeed, I will. I'm probably at the stage where I can. England has accepted white peace for France, so that is the second time an ally has white peace out of an offensive war we've waged, and that's good for us because if you remember, on the condition that France was going to aid me, we actually did promise them territory. So that means we don't have to give them any territory, we can keep the French alliance, which is actually good. Um, we are going to have to be careful that England's continental allies don't go ahead and launch some amphibious landings. I'm going to anticipate, well, Engl England certainly is. You can see they're starting to transfer, because they pieced out with France, they have access to their formerly occupied French territories and able to recruit additional units, so I am going to continue with Siege of London, abandon the Siege of Meath, and just keep an army um, keep an army ready to interdict any uh, disembarkations that the France's allies may wish to execute. Again, we're not out of the woods yet. England is, I would say, recklessly reinforcing. Castile has declared war in England. Well, that's bad news for them, so I don't know what... Oh, yeah, England secured territory from Spain in the last war, so that's probably what they're going after. I doubt Spain's going to help us much, though. So I'll eliminate these small enemy army sects. 
Um, I'm very glad I took my entire army from Meath in order to do this because, as you can see, they were actually able to marshal up 3,000 troops there. I think that sieging down Meath is going to be beyond the pale uh, in, in just taking the view that it's not really going to be achievable here. We're not going to be able to siege down Meath. Uh, Brittany offers white peace. I will accept that. Uh, nullifies the threat of an amphibious landing from them. Still have to deal with the prospect of Flanders attacking us since we have no fleet. Continue our war taxes. And I'm going to disband uh, some mercenary units here. I'll do that cautiously though. Don't want to lower my army size too much until we've successfully completed this war. Now we're not going to go after the sieging of Meath here. We're not going to have time. We're going to the bankruptcy is looming large over our poor, our poor disheveled nation. So we'll focus on finally getting the siege of London complete. And once that is done, we'll aim to peace out immediately after occupying Kent. Now there we go. We get a bit of luck here. We get a breach in the fortifications. That will immeasurably help us in completing this siege. Pomerania has sued for peace. I will accept. Also, the advantage of that is it boosts our overall war score. We're not going to be able to go for 100% occupation because when we've got no chance of occupying England's continental holdings based on their blockade. Eliminate that army in Wessex. Very close. Very close to completing this war. Pull out of Wessex, just anticipating they'll then move into that province and then attack them there. Yeah, they do indeed. Now, losing war exhaustion at this stage now that we're approaching the end of war would be nice, but can't afford 40, 40 ducats. That's four months worth of total income, so. Siege of London is complete. Okay. <laughs> Almost there. 93% war score. Complete the Siege of Kent and we'll sue for peace. And we'll hope we haven't left it too late. The, the question is going to be whether or not when we disband our entire army and lower all army maintenance, disband all ships, muffle, uh, destroy all fortifications, whether or not we're still going to be losing money. If we are still losing money, we're going to go bankrupt. So I don't think we will, though. So... These are the territories that I had fabricated. I fabricated all the provinces I could. Now, those territories aren't really of geostrategic significance. They're poor. They're uh, we got a couple of Welsh provinces there. I'm just experimenting to see. Now, the, the advantage, obviously, with taking provinces, you've fabricated claims, is it reduces the cost of coin by 10%. But we are going to need London... There's really no question about it. London is the most, the wealthiest province in the whole of the British Isles. And if we take it, we get increased trade problems. Taking London is going to allow us to pay down these inordinate amount of loans. So any peace treaty that allows us to take London, I'm happy with. Uh, obviously, we want to expand the frontier a little bit by taking Cumbria and Northumberland. Meath would be good because I believe we actually have a mission to take Meath. Which should lower our autonomy if I'm correct. With that said. The goal here is to take the wealthiest provinces we can fit into 100% war score. Yeah, the, the coin costs. I don't even want to look at the coin costs. But I will probably should have put my national focus into administrative a long time ago. Bit of a mistake on my part, but that will also ensure that we don't fall behind at military tech level. So it's good, both has disadvantage and... Okay, so of course we can't take Meath because we don't have the fortification there and we haven't taken any nearby fortification. So that looks good to me. Those are the provinces I want. I'm not going to be able to go for war reparations or financial concessions. 
I'd like to. We're going to get 48 ducats, actually. That's not too bad. That looks good to me. 1,000 administrative power and coring. But those provinces are... We're gonna we're gonna get a discount and coring, so I'm gonna take it. Right, folks, there you go. There's our first war with England complete. Somehow we were able to defeat a uh, an arm total army size at the start of war of thirty six thousand troops, I believe it was. Gonna raise autonomy in these provinces immediately because we do not have the means to deal with rebels now. Now I'm just gonna plow diplomatic part into reducing war exhaustion because. Rebels. Um, it's going to set us behind in tech. Yeah, we did it. That's a bit of a relief. I'm going to uh, destroy all fortifications. Because we can't afford... Can't afford to maintain even more full fortifications. We, the good news is we are making money. So we will not go bankrupt under any circumstances. Which is kind of good. Disband all my mercenaries. Yeah, a thousand administered apart in coring. Sign the merchant skill to London. That'll boost its income a little bit. Ah, yes, we did suffer quite high uh, total aggressive expansion. So I'm um, a coalition was quite likely given the circumstances. Like, I could have gone for less territory and maybe war reparations instead, but the, the downside with that would have been just a state's interaction, get some diplomatic monarch power. You can see I'm doing that. Downside of that would have been, well, the plus side, less less aggressive expansion. I just can see they're coalitioning away there. More Utrecht, Holland, and God knows what else. But I need to take as much territory as I can to damage England's long-term strength. That's going to allow us to win subsubsequent wars and totally, totally re t take control. Uh, take control, I should say, of the British Isles. But I bet you were doubting me when I said we could take down England basically on our own. But that's what we've achieved. You can pull off miracles with uh, appropriate amounts of loans and mercenaries. Too bad we weren't able to rival England before the declaration of war, because if we were, we would have had, like, 60 power projection. And thus, a ton of additional monarch power going forward. But we weren't able to rival England, so it's a shame. But I have done this before where I am able to rival England before this declaration. So, disband advisors, because, again, I mean, look at our financial position. Wait until, um, yeah, we're having to extend a lot of loans here. What are we losing money from? We're 5.31 ducats per month on interest. So I'm actually disbanding all my cavalry. Time will tell if that was a smart move because we've got a coalition against us now. And if we low army size too much, no doubt we may be facing a dishonorable uh i think it's dishonorable scum war goal declaration of war so get my uh remove the last war exhaustion and start coring and we'll start coring first with london that's the most important province based off its income it's going to take a long time to complete coring all of these provinces the army size is dangerously low here only uh, only five regiments, all of which are infantry. I'm going to have to low army maintenance here. We're going to struggle to pay off those loans. Oh boy. Well, right, folks, I think I'm going to put a cut in here. It's been a very eventful episode. More is sure to follow. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.